What's going on everybody, LK here, back at it again with another video, and today some more Dragon Ball Fighters for y'all. I wanted to follow up uh, yesterday's video about Gogeta with a talk about frame data specifically because most people think Gogeta is bad because of his frame data. So in this video, I'm going to talk about a few common situations in the game. Uh, the advantage and disadvantage that are there and what it actually means when you're in those situations. If you like the content I'm putting out, please consider liking this video or subscribing to the channel if you already have not. It does help the channel grow and I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, so frame data. So if you have used training mode a decent amount, you'll know that the game shows you frame advantage. So for those of you who don't know what this is, a very simple explanation is that the game runs on frames. Uh, one frame is about 1 60th of a second. This game runs at 60 FPS. So when the game says attack startup and frame advantage, they're referring to uh, that speed. Now, while you don't have to memorize all the frame data in the game, it does help to know some of the common situation because a lot of the frame data in this game is homogenous. So what that means is a lot of uh, situations have the same advantage and disadvantage. So you could use that in your favor. So when this frame advantage number is minus, that means the person who did the attack is disadvantaged. When it is just shows a number like this, so there it says three, uh, that means the person is plus or they have the advantage. The parentheses uh, is that number means that that's when you land. So it's the actual frame advantage. So uh, when you do a jab or something, it's always going to be the same number. But when you're falling from something, the number is going to be a little bit different sometimes. So let's start with a really common number and something that comes up a lot. Blocked 6M, blocked universal overhead. So this is actually zero, which means the two characters are even, so both characters can move at the same time. So what this generally means is that you go into a class situation like this. You might have seen this a lot in tournament play. It's because two attacks are hitting at the same time. So when you block this move, you know that you can move at the same time as your opponent. So you're not going to win if you press buttons necessarily. You're going to be even, you'll go into this class situation and there's a little guessing game around it. Now, one other important thing to know about this is that if you're playing against a character that has a slower jab than normal, then you are essentially at advantage even though the frame advantage is zero. So in this example here, I'm going to do it and he's gonna hit me out of my jab because Broly, since he's so tall, uh, it takes a longer time for his fist to reach Vegeta, so it's seven frames, so he will never win that exchange. Which leads us to another thing where some characters have invincible moves uh, on e either immediately or slightly later. Broly has uh, an armor move that hits in about four frames, so in this spot, he can challenge with that. So next, let's talk about minus one to minus five. So this is really, really common in the game. A lot of characters jabs are safe. They're like minus two, minus three, minus four. And most characters have one medium that is minus five or minus four. Base Vegeta's 5M is minus five and his 2M is minus six. What does the minus five mean? So the fastest attacks in the game are six frames. So a minus five move means that they can never, ever actually be punished. At a glance, you might be like, so what? I can cancel into whatever I want, like 2M, Key Blast, Special Move. Why does it matter that you can't mash and punish it? Because you can use it to threaten by resetting pressure sometimes. So when you have a safe move like this, you can choose to do continue your pressure by delaying. You could do a special move or you can reset with a jab because you don't have to fear being punished by your opponent's jab. You can also pick to do stuff like back off. You can do a lot more things specifically because you don't have to worry about getting hit ever, as opposed to doing something like this, where you technically could be punished if you try to reset your pressure, back off, etc. So characters that have uh, safe mediums, and I have Bardock here because both his mediums are safe. This is uh, one of the reasons why he is so good on offense. So. Because of this, he's harder to guard cancel and it's harder to tell how he's going to continue his pressure. He can legitimately do this or he could do delay into a button. He can do this and jab again. He can back off. He could do a lot of things because both of them are safe. So it makes him a little bit more unpredictable. It also makes it so that he can stop his pressure and delay his pressure more often, which makes him harder to guard cancel. So in the case of a jab, if someone matches you after jabs, 
Uh, it's a pretty risky bash. You have your entire moveset available at this time. You can cancel to mediums, delay cancel if you want, cancel to key blast, special moves, back off, dragon rush. There's a lot of stuff you could do off your jabs. Most people will not try to challenge you off jabs besides off standing jab because of the new uh, tick throw dragon rush. There's a much higher chance they'll wait for mediums because not only are they slower so you have more time to see it, but they understand that you have less options available. In the case of special moves, so Bardock's Lariat, or AKA Larry, is minus five. You cannot punish it again, so he can do things like back off. But uh, on the defender side, you know that their pressure is essentially done and all they could do is just try to make a, a guessing game around what they're going to do to try to protect themselves. So let's talk about minus six to minus eight. So a lot of characters have a medium that's around minus six to minus eight. Uh, having a jab that's that minus is extremely uncommon. I think there's only a couple of characters in the game that have this. So I'm going to talk about mediums because we're talking about general situations. While it isn't necessarily so bad, Gotenks mediums are both unsafe on block. So he has a minus 6 5M and a minus 7 2M. You know that it is much, much, much more likely that they will cancel into things because they kind of have to. They can't really reset pressure that easily. They have to cancel into special moves, but it's just safe enough that it's still kind of ambiguous and hard to deal with. So now we'll talk about moves that are minus 9 or worse. These are pretty much generally punishable. In the case of heavy attacks, uh, they probably will cancel into something and you know they have very limited options depending on how they went into it If they did key blast into H they pretty much only have special moves or their 2H available If they did 2H they generally only have special moves available So one thing about Dragon Ball is there are a bunch of moves that uh, are flagged as being really good So they have the same frame data no matter what generally in fighting games distance can affect the advantage this is really common for key blasts so for example this point blank key blast is minus three but this full screen key blast is plus 11 which is very 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 advantage so an example of a special move always being the same frame advantage is the medium kick so it's minus nine from point blank now usually doing it from farther in another fighting game it would be much safer but in this game it is still minus nine so next, let's talk about plus one. So this number was pretty uncommon in season two, but it's very common in season three because a lot of these moves were EX moves and they don't want the EX moves to be super busted. So they adjusted the frame data. So the main thing to know about plus one is that you actually can challenge a decent amount of ways, specifically because they can't hit you out of your jump. So you can choose, you can choose to jump, you can choose to, Backstep, if a move has plus frames and you have the space to choose reflect. It's a favorable situation for the attacker for sure, but the defender has a lot of options. As opposed to plus two. So vanish is very commonly referred to as plus two because you have to land on the ground. When you block a plus two move, you cannot jump. So your options are much, much, much more limited. The last one is plus four. This is mildly uncommon, but common enough because a lot of people play Bardock. Uh, essentially, you can kind of treat this as a vanish because you sort of have the same options as far as movement. Like you can still try to backdash, reflect, and things like that. Uh, it is just much harder to pick buttons because he just has more time to work with. A common thing to remember too is that if you block moves in the air, you universally gain six frames of advantage. So in the case of, let's say, Trunks, this EX Shining Slash is minus five, so he's safe. But when they're jumping, he is now plus one. So you cannot actually counterattack. You still get the same plus one situation. So you can like try to jump, backdash, whatever, but you cannot counterattack. So keep that in mind. If you've ever thought, why did I get hit here in like a weird situation? It's probably because you tried to match after the landing. So Super Dash is actually the exception to this rule. Super Dash is generally zero on the ground, but in the air, it is only plus two, not plus six, as you think it might be. So if you're a character that has a fast air attack to follow up, you can actually push your turn here and it's pretty hard for the defender to deal with. You bounce off so they can try to like jab because they have to account for travel time. So for example here, I'm gonna try to air dash at him and take my turn and he's going to hit me. So actually Trunks is pretty bad at this situation because he doesn't really have a fast move that reaches there like this. So a character that's pretty good at this is SSJ Goku actually. His Tatsu is pretty fast, his quarter circle back L, 
pretty fast, 7 frames, and travels pretty far, so they can't counterattack, and you could generally reach them. Super Dash is pretty much considered to be a rock, paper, scissors type of situation in mid screen, which is why people like assists like DPs and stuff or GT Goku because it helps make that an actual outright advantage. So here's an example of me using base Vegeta A in this exact way. Now, normally they would bounce off when you super dash at them, but in the corner, they can't bounce off anymore. So you can take your turn for real. Like here, you are truly advantageous. So the main thing you would like to do here is that if you have a dive of some sort or any attack that goes down, you can try to use that after super dash. If the move is a key blast, they can challenge, but if it's not, you can basically do it and they can't really do anything about it. So here's an, a quick example. Okay. Hopefully that all made sense. Uh, again, I really try to just take general examples that you can apply to a lot of characters. There are some more nuances than uh, what I explained in this video, but hopefully this is a good start. As usual, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Like and subscribe if you feel like it, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.